Hallelujah. Good morning, friends. And I'm glad again to be here with you. We started the series yesterday. They set up for a divine encounter. You know, right now, Daddy started divine encounter with us yesterday evening. He's going to continue today till tomorrow. And like I told you yesterday, this topic set up for a divine encounter will continue till tomorrow also. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We really thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for everything you have done, you are doing. And thank you for your interest in us and in our well-being. Glory be to your name. Lord, as we look into your word, please speak to us expressly. In a language we will understand. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Friends, we started yesterday and we talked about David and uh, how he set up himself for a generational divine encounter. We want to talk about his son that became king after him called Solomon. Uh, remember our test is 1 Kings 17, 8 and 10. And uh, remember again, let me read. The Bible says, Then the Lord said to Elisha, Now go. So remember, a divine encounter is usually premised on obedience to divine instruction or application you're applying yourself to divine instruction remember that yeah we you know the bible says elijah lord told him go and he went and you remember the story but friends today in second chronicles chapter one if you read from verse six through to twelve you see a divine encounter of a man the bible says clearly he said, give, and it shall be given to you. The Bible says, seed time and harvest will not cease. Now, Solomon had that understanding. He had learned from his father David that when you want to do something to God, you do it with your whole heart. You do it extremely. You know? And he went out extremely. The Bible said he sacrificed something that had not been done before. Thousand pound offering. By the time you get to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, you know, the same Solomon in 2 Chronicles 7, the Bible recorded if you read from verse 11 because of what he had done. The Bible said the king, when he had finished the temple and the palace successfully completing all the plans for them, the Lord appeared to him. When you execute divine instruction, there will always be divine encounter. And remember, Solomon got something very great. The Bible says, if you read from verse 15, say, I will watch over this temple and I will... I will be ready to hear all the prayer that I have offered here. 16. Because I have chosen it. When you do some things that provoke divine presence of God, because of your obedience to God's instruction, your life cannot remain the same. Your family, your generation, and people around you cannot remain the same. Every Because of what Solomon did, because Solomon applied himself to divine instruction, because Solomon understood the value of the scripture, because of what he did, God's blessing became generational upon that temple. Beloved brethren, I read as I conclude. First King chapter 10 and verse 23. First King 10, 23. King Solomon was richer. King Solomon was wiser than any other king. Why? Because he did some things in obedience to divine instruction. He applied himself to divine instruction and he became the wisest and the richest. Without brethren, it does not matter where you are. What you do in applying yourself to divine order is what brings your encounter with the Almighty. I believe God for you that you'll be wise in taking that decision to obey a divine order or apply yourself to a divine instruction. I'll see you tomorrow. Remember this evening, 6 p.m., that day will be ministry again at Divine Encounter, a special edition. God bless you.